guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brianna Lenz, and today is Floss Tube number 38. Yes, it has been <laughs> three months. So let's just like not even get into it. Let's just go straight into today's floss tube. All right, I have so much to show you, you guys. It's been so long since I did a floss tube that I thought that this would be easier to do it in this format for the majority of the video because I have so much. Like I didn't realize it had been three months. I went like a month and a half without really stitching because I did a lot of crochet. I did a crochet class for my local homeschool co-op and I just did a lot of knitting as well and just a lot of other crafts in in general. Um, so I'm going to be talking mostly, uh, why do I have so many hair ties in here? Mostly cross stitch for this and then I'm going to be doing another video where it's like what have I been crafting and crafty plans so that way you know my stitching kind of stays stitching and everything else kind of can be summed up in that video. That's the plan anyway. Um, but of course there will be some intermingled stuff as well as just stitching. So first thing that I finished since I last saw you, I did not rewatch my last floss tube three months ago. So I don't remember what I said my plans were. I don't, I didn't look back. Um, we're, we're starting with a clean slate. Um, but the first thing that I picked up to kind of get back into my stitching mojo was this guy, which is Welcome to Batty Bakery. This is uh, an older pattern by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I know that you can purchase this pattern from, Pro Fro blah, 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 from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery now, but my pattern is originally from a magazine. I think it was the 2018 or 2017 um, Just Cross Stitch Halloween edition. Anyway, and so I had, this is my oldest kitted project. I had this since I lived in Colorado and so I finally finished it and it was really really fun to do. I loved it. Um, I had so many plans for fully finishing this and then I've seen so many ways to finish cross stitch in other formats with stitching like into uh, different different quilted ways that I just couldn't commit. I didn't I don't know I have so many different cross stitch pieces out on display right now for Halloween and I was looking around to see where this fit in my home decor and it just doesn't and I really tried to make it fit um and then I thought well I might just do a bunch of like purple pillows but then if I do that I only have two purple pieces and so I thought let's just let's just hold on because I don't want to make a choice this year that I might regret for next year and I mean it's small you know and so I had originally done I didn't bring it but I had like painted a a wooden pumpkin and I painted it all black and it was really stark and it would be really striking and pretty but it just didn't fit anywhere in my house and so I'm just I'm just waiting to see exactly how I want to finish this I'm going to however cut the fabric and then um, put this away so I can use this fabric maybe for something else for next year but again I do like the idea of having like a basket full of purple stitching I like that but until I have my third one I don't really have a set to do you know, and then I did this. So this was Batty Bakery from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And then this one is my pattern. And this is the uh, spooky, spooky garden party. And I love this. This is actually based off of a painting that I did and I can't find it. Like I set it aside so that way I wouldn't lose it. And you guys know, I, I haven't lost it. I've just misplaced it. And you know, I know better than to put something somewhere special because I'll never find it. It's too special. It's like a unicorn. So I'll probably find it as soon as I'm done finishing, you know, with this video. But this is stitched on hand dyed fabric. So this was originally 28 count white or tan fabric. I don't even remember. I have a video on it, but I um, used Rit dye and I thought that I had gray and I didn't. So I used just a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of black. And I got some really good modeling on it and I have quite a bit left. And I really, really like the color of this a lot. Um, I have enough to where I could stitch other pieces on this same color fabric. And it matches the Halloween vibe that I had this year, which is like a very modern Halloween, very modern colors, um, very non-traditional. Usually, you know me, I'm a very traditional Halloween kind of gal. But this year, I was just really enjoying these more modern things, just to change it up a bit, I think, because I have done, I've just enjoyed the same kind of Halloween every year. Very primitive, you know, you know. But um, I'll share this in a minute. 
But anyway, so this is Spooky Garden Party, and this is, again, stitched on 28 count fabric. And in my chart, I put uh, this type of fabric actually as the good alternative to this because this is hand dyed. You're not gonna be able to replicate this unless you dye it at home. But if you do plan on stitching this, I have this available in my Etsy shop. Um, and this is the 28 count wood violet and jobelin. I really like this color. I would buy this again, especially if I were to do like another mirabilia or something like that. Like I think that'd be really pretty or one of the mill hills would be really pretty on a purple. But anyway, I really liked this. Um, Again, this is just a really fun little painting that I did with my girls. We sat down and was painting some Halloween stuff. And I have a couple of other paintings that I did that I would love to turn into cross-stitch patterns because they're just fun. And um, you know what it does look like? They're kind of like dancing. The flowers are like candy corn. It says spooky in the banner. And um, on film, it might be harder to see. But in real life, you can see it really well. And then I really liked these modern little stars these little shimmers throughout the whole piece and it looks like this would take a long time but this was actually my favorite part to stitch and then the grass is of course you know like black dirt and I think it's just really playful it's very much my my style and I really love it I just even if nobody buys it like I just am happy that I turned one of my paintings into a cross stitch pattern like it was very very fulfilling creatively for me to do this does that make sense um, I had originally like had huge plans and then I just underestimated how much time everything would take me to do the week that I did this. And so we had a Halloween party, um, uh, us girls and our closest friends and we had them over and we had the best time. So anyway, so I had this, I finished this and then we had a Halloween party and it was so much fun. I don't know. I'm getting on like a tangent because I just feel like I'm talking to my girlfriends. You know how it is. Like if you film videos, sometimes you just kind of like, you get in your groove and it's just like, you know that you're going to be interacting with, oh, the leaves are falling, ADD today. Um, you just, you're, you know that you're going to be interacting with people that you haven't talked to in a while. So it's like you're catching up and you just kind of go on tangents. Anyway, so um, yeah, so I stitched this and then I had, uh, I had friends over for a Halloween party on that Saturday and I just, it took me way longer to get everything ready because again, I underestimated how long it would take to do everything <laughs> anyway. So then I got this out the next week, but I really like this. So if this is something that you think is really cute, then you can go to my Etsy shop, Brianna Lentz shop, uh, dot Etsy dot com. And there you go. Um, another thing that I did was I did this quilty zipper bag, which I actually filmed a tutorial for. I loved this. This was so much fun. So again, I'm using more modern fabrics that I got from Joann's this year. And it is such a, I love it. I've always wanted to make a project bag like this. And this is, you know, the, the Sawtooth Star. I feel like there's a couple different names for this type of quilt block, but it's so pretty. So you have um, you know, the coordinating fabrics there, and then you have like the little rock and roll skeleton hands in pink, which everything kind of goes together. And on the inside, you have the rock and roll hands in there too, peace and rock and roll and, and whatever. And, um, peace and love is really what that's saying. I mean, this is the, I love you sign and this is peace. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a little rock and roll, but it's saying peace and I love you, which we do that all the time to my kids. We say, I love you like this. So, um, yeah, so this is really cute. So if you would like to see how I made this, I have a video on my channel, which I will, which I will have linked down below. And the video is centered for the beginner. Um, I show you how to put in your zipper, um, how I attach the, the batting and the lining and everything. So if this is something that you'd be interested in making yourself, um, I also post a link in that video to the free pattern for this quilt block that you can do in different sizes. So yeah, so this is my, ow, this is my Halloween project bag for right now. And I'm actually going to be putting these away in my finished but not fully finished box. And I will be putting this project in this bag to live for the next year, or probably two years. This project's taking a long time. So something else that I picked up that I started last year that I barely started, I kitted it up on my birthday last year. Um, oh yeah, that was something else that we had this this uh, month was, it was my birthday on October 10th. And then it was our 13th wedding anniversary on October 16th. 
and it's we call it our birth anniversary like it's just it's literally the busiest time of the year for us um but i started this last year and i have decided i really do not like stitching on the perforated paper i am just i am not gentle enough to stitch on perforated paper i i just i I'm going to finish this because I've done a lot of work and this is a pricey project and I do love it and I will enjoy having this in a frame. Um, however, I have the Santa's Treats Mill Hill kitted up and I bought red, like bright Christmas red Jobelin fabric and I was debating if I wanted to stitch on it. I mean, it was like $3 to buy the fabric and so I will be stitching it on the red fabric instead of the red perforated paper because I've already bent, I already bent this a couple different times. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, but I am, however, super loving this frame and never say never, right? Like I bought the frame. I probably will do other things as the years go by. I, I could see me wanting to do the Mill Hill kit where they have all of the, the corn, like the Indian corn, which is supposed to be one of the harder Mill Hill kits to do because of all the beads. But I would absolutely love that Mill Hill kit with the, the Indian corn, um, on display just like this in a frame. But um, this is, what is this? This is the Haunted Cottage. This was a birthday present to myself last year. And again, on my birthday, I set it all up, which I really do love how I organized everything. It was been super clutch. And I have just been plugging away little by little, just doing a couple threads, you know, when I have time. Cause you have to hold it in your hand and I'm just not used to doing that anymore. So I just, I don't want to roach on my hands for the project. So I'll just do a little by little and I am making progress. I like in my dream world, I would love to have this little tree done like to here and then this top section done. So when I pick it back up, I get to do the fun stuff. Like I get to do the house, which I think it'll make it go a lot faster. Um, cause right now it's just kind of like you're stitching in the weeds, you know, like nothing really makes sense yet. But then once you kind of start to see things come together, everything's like a lot easier to stitch, right? It just feels like it's going a lot faster. So that's going to live in this bag going forward. And then in here, I have the little tacky mat, which last year I was doing my own experiment to see which little beading mats I like the best. And I like this one a lot. And then these are all the threads, or all the threads, all the beads that go in it. And I need to get this needle binder out. I love that needle binder. So I need to replace it with another Halloween one. And then I always, uh, I always photocopy my Mill Hill, so I have my my uh, photocopy draft in there. But yeah, I am actively working on this through October, and then I will be replacing this bag and putting everything in there after this video, probably now that I've shared it with you. So yeah, I've been working on that, which has been fun because it's very autumnal and very, you know. Uh, seasonal. Um, while I'm sitting, I'll show you this. I made this. These are the bags that I'm going to be showing you how to make in my tutorial that I'm filming today. And I haven't decided if I'm going to show it as like a last minute trick or treat bag or if I'm just going to do like a library bag because I don't need another Halloween bag this close to Halloween because it is October 25th. It's Friday. But this one is the one that I did for my daughter, Fiona. She liked this. She picked out this fabric. And so it's using this kind of handle. I got this from Hobby Lobby. And this fabric was at Joann's. And all the Joann's Halloween fabric is on super sale right now. So if you like anything that you see here, then you can probably pick it up. Um, and then, so that was for Fiona. I did four total. I did two for my kids and two for my friends' as girls. And so I'll insert some footage here. <laughs> And then this is the bag that I did for Julesy. I had this fabric since last year or maybe the year before. And I, I just never made her a bag. And so I thought this is the year that I'm going to do it. So it's really, really cute. And I love it. 
I love it, love it, love it. It's just so sweet. And then on the inside, this is just simple Halloween black fabric with orange dots. And this fabric is from Walmart. I don't remember where I got this from. I probably got this from Joann's one year too. I'm going to guess. But yeah, it's just really cute Disney Halloween, which I don't think you're ever old, too old for that. Super cute. So those are their trick-or-treat bags this year, which I love because those are homemade. And so yeah, so if you want to know how to make this, this will be in the tutorial that I'm filming today that will be up in the next couple of days. Um, let's see what else. Oh yeah. Um, future stitching plans. I'm going all over the place. This is not like in consecutive order is a Maria, Maria, <laughs> what did I say? Maria, Mirabilia, and it is the gypsy queen. So I wanted to start this on my birthday, but I did take a picture. This was my big Christmas present last year. And I absolutely love her. And I just haven't devoted the time to starting her. And so I have it fully kitted. Um, and it calls for 32 count milk chocolate linen fabric, which I, I think is going to be nice enough to stitch on. It's a huge piece of linen. And I will probably be using the hoop for this. Um, so what I want to do is, cause I was looking at this and I was like, I need to get myself organized before I start this is I have all the beads. They're so pretty. Like anyway, um, I'll insert like a really pretty video here of the supplies, but I have all of these threads and I thought I need to get organized. I need to just have this in a set place with everything to where I can pick it up and work on it before I get started. Um, because once you undo how pretty everything's packaged, it just becomes chaos so fast. So I am working on doing that. So I got, where is my bag? I don't have my bag, but I got like a, a floss organizer and I am going to be putting all of my DMCs on plastic bobbins and I'm going to wind them up and then I'm going to get just a bunch of different needles. So that way I can just be able to like move my needle easily so like if I'm not using that thread anymore I can just snip it and then I can put it back into my bobbin and then continue on and I'm going to have it in a nice organizer and so that is what I'm going to do so I just got with some birthday money I got my stuff to do my floss organization for this and that is going to go in a beautiful little package before I start this project because I'm dying to start this and um it actually like looking at the chart it does not seem overwhelming to me at all it just seems like it's like four regular size cross stitch smalls but you just have to do everything in one so i just need to have it organized so yeah so the gypsy queen can't wait to do that oh that bag goes there and also i want to uh i want to quilt a big organizer for that so that everything can go in a really beautiful uh project bag because it's going to be with me for a couple of years instead of this like this has lived here for a year and i'm thinking no no ma'am so I want to make a lot of project bags and I want to start putting them up in my Etsy shop because I just, I really like the fabric and I like making these things, but I don't need to keep everything. But there are certain things that I want to do for specific reasons and for specific sizes. And so I'm going to continue practicing my quilting while I do these things and just get better and better and better. Um, oh, okay. So here is something else. I'm sorry if I'm talking really fast. I'm not trying to, but I like to keep my videos at about half an hour, especially since I need to edit it because y'all know, I tell you almost every video, I just don't have great internet. So I can't do the hour, hour and a half videos, um, very well. Okay. So something else that I started, but I haven't worked on in the last two weeks only because we have been so busy is the Lizzie Kate Thankful String. I've had this kitted up since last year. This is a quick, quick stitch. Um, it, but I really would like to have a couple Thanksgiving pieces out because I don't have any. And I have a couple small projects that I could do that I've had for a while. Last year, uh, I was doing so many of the 50 cross stitch videos, 50 like thematic pattern videos for cross stitch that I literally put up my Christmas tree on Halloween day last year. Granted, it was rainy and we were kind of rained out, but still it was worth it because my video did really well because I had that video up for Christmas, um, November 1st, but it was just a lot of Christmas last year. So this year, what I want to do is I want to celebrate each holiday, you know, kind of give them their moment. And so when 
Thanksgiving is when Thanksgiving, when Halloween is over this year, um, I'm just going to put the Halloween decorations up probably November 1st. We're going to watch Coco for Dia de los Muertos. And then we're going to uh, watch Coco and we'll probably watch the book of the book of life. And I'll put the Halloween stuff up. And then we're going to have a couple weeks of like just autumn and Thanksgiving. And we may or may not decorate for Halloween or oh my gosh get it together. We may or may not decorate for Christmas before Thanksgiving is over. I don't know, but I'll at least have two weeks of dress fall before we transition over to Christmas. That does not mean that I won't be making a whole bunch of stuff for Christmas though. I will be. My house just won't be Christmas fied because I just kind of want to give each holiday their moment this year. So anyway, so this is in one of my bags that I made like a long time ago, which I still love. This is one of my favorite fabrics of all time, I think. And I love a lot of fabric, but this is still one of my favorites. Um, so yeah, so this is being stitched on some extra piece of, I think, 32 count platinum Lugana. It's either 32 count or 28 count, but it looks like, I don't know. But it is platinum Lugana, that's for sure. And so I'm just pulling threads. I need to, the reason why I haven't stitched more, honestly, is because I need to find an orange. Otherwise, I probably would have just kept picking this up and working on it. But this past week, instead of picking up this, I started something else, which I will share with you in a minute. Let's keep going through what I've been working on. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. I also picked up this guy, which I am making slow progress on. This is from the Blackbird Samplers Ooh La La um, samplers and projects with a French flair. And I am working on, it is not on the front page, but it is this one. It's just not hard. It's just that I kind of just pick it up and I do a little bit of stitching and then I pick it up and do a little bit of stitching. And so I did this and this just a little bit, just a little bit. And so I'm more than halfway done. I just need to continue working on this alphabet. So maybe my goal will be to have this done the next time I see you guys. And I'll just keep working on it. And then I'm going to put Lentz on the bottom instead of that person's last name. And this is on some tea dyed fabric using Manor Red by Classic Color Works. And again, really easy. And I would love all of these. I'd love to do all of them. I really, and I tell you guys all the time, I really want to do that one. So just some of these projects that I'm just trying to get through that I've had for a long time. Uh, let's see. Future stitchy puns. I have another thing that I want to show you, but I'm going to go through what I have on my table right now. Um, so first I'm going to share this is a little bit of haul and a little bit of like future stitchy plans for November, probably in December is I bought this off eBay. I absolutely love it. I'd never seen it before. This was a good deal. They have a couple other ones in this set, but my daughter absolutely loves bunny rabbits. And so I thought this was so cute. And so you have a little bunny rabbit and she's ice skating and a little one as an angel and their Christmas bunny set of two ornaments, three and a half by four and a half inches oval. And it's fully kitted with like, look at the colors on this. Like they're very old school and I love it. And you have the white Ada and like, look, you can tell the age because it's starting to yellow. 1991, Daisy Kingdom by Busilla. I would love to have all of these, but I thought you have to at least start this one before you buy more of them. But I wanted to replace the Ada, and I have this in my stash, and it is 28 count white artist, artiste, 28 count even weave. And so I will replace the Ada for this. And then I want to fully finish it just as you see it, just like this. And so again, I want to just have like a set of the ornaments and then display them somewhere for Jules because she will love them. She's my seven-year-old and she just loves bunnies. And so, yeah, so I would like to get these done for Christmas this year. This is part of my Christmas stitching that I want to get done. And I love it. I'm just really into like this older vintage 90s. I'm just, I'm really loving it. So I want to do that. And then um, part of my haul is I bought this book. Who knows? 25 cents, maybe, maybe a dollar, you know? Um, and it's actually like super chock full of great stuff. Sometimes you buy these and it's like a lot of fluff or it's just not, not what you would want to do. 
not what I would want to do anyway. But this one, however, this was a gamble and this one is amazing. So this is Better Homes and Gardens Christmas Cross Stitch. Uh, let's see if there's a year. 1987. So it's older than I am. And it has some really, really good stuff in here. So country plaids. I mean, super cute. These little napkins, you could just do these as little pillows, little ornaments. I love the finishing. I'd love to do this. Um, beautiful, simple stockings. I mean, it's all completely achievable. And like they have some of this stuff that's matted, but you could totally do this like in a circle and finish that on the top of a box. Everywhere, everywhere, Christmas tonight. Beautiful. I mean, honestly, even if you were to do the old school matting of somewhere, if you have a place that would be willing to do that, I think that that's timeless, to be honest with you. I love the red and white. I guess we're just going to flip through this real quick. But this, this is the main project. I have two projects that I want to do from this this is the first one and this is christmas carols and i'm going to do a whole video on this one as well because i think why not um it's probably one of those videos where i'll put a whole bunch of effort into it and nobody will watch it <laughs> but i loved this so this is what i'm doing this is my big christmas project in the cross stitch world for me um and this was completely impulsive so christmas carols and you have Joseph, you have Mary, you have baby Jesus, you have two sheep, and you have, you know, the donkey. And uh, like just quickly, like they don't look like they don't look that time consuming. Like a lot of this is uh, white space, like negative space. So really, I think that Joseph would take me less time than it would to do like a, a prairie school or Santa because there's just, it's a lot of white. So it's a lot of space, but it's a lot of negative stitching space. You know what I'm saying? So I went through my stash and I pulled the threads that I had. And again, I'm going to be making like a really nice bag for this because why not? And it's just going to be like a Christmas bag. And plus again, I just want to start practicing other things. Like I have to justify it. Right. But, um, when I was pulling threads for this, this is really when I got just really irritated with my own DMC organization. I have been irritated with my DMC thread organization for a while because I really liked the flash drops, okay? Like, they were really cool for a couple of years. But man, is it just not working for me. Like, I just feel like I am over buying in duplicates or triplets of these threads because I have them on these flash drops for different projects. But if I had them on bobbins, like if I weren't actively working on that project, I theoretically could just have my list and put it back in like my master set. And so you guys, I'm really over the next year going to be working on just having a master set of DMC. And I think that I will have to purchase way less in the future. Do you know what I'm saying? So anyway, so my husband already made me my own, uh, my own display for this. And he actually made me choose two different sizes and Jules took the bigger size because she wanted it to be for her stuffies. So anyway, so I think this size will be big enough anyway for my cross stitch ornaments. So this is the blank right here. And then I'm going to like decorate the background, you know, and just make it a vibe. And then I'm going to have my little cross stitch ornaments or cross stitch pieces in there. And then that's going to be my nativity display. And I, I'm really excited about it. Like, I think that's something that, you know, is passed down to people like, Oh, remember like grandma, Br grandma Bree made that back in 2024. Wow. That's so cool. You know, like, I don't know. Those are dreams. Those are dreams that I have. But anyway, you know, you know, God willing, I live a very long life. And in 40 years, it's like, Oh yeah, I made that back in the, back in the twenties of 2024. Anyway, so that is something that I want to make. And I have the, I'm not going to be doing it on Ada. I have 28 count antique, uh, antique even weave. Let's just call it that. And coming from one, two, three stitch, as well as the rest of the threads that I need for this project. And I'm going to be bobbinating them winding them on bobbins and then I'm going to make this oh yeah I, I said I was going to make a project back but um I may or may not because actually what I wanted to do 
is I wanted to put like the bobbins and stuff in here. And then I got this from Goodwill this past week for 99 cents. And so it's like super vintage and it does fit together nice. It's a little beat up, but I actually really like it because this is super, super vintage. And I think that it goes with the, the time period of this. And so I have so many of these old school books. And so this is just going to be my little kit for um, my little box for some of these vintage Christmas sewings. Just puts you in the mood. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so Christmas carols. And then I also really, this might not happen, but if I do have the gumption and the time to try to do this, I would absolutely love to do this. I've always wanted to try to make one of these older dolls. I've made primitive crafts. I've done a lot of this kind of stuff. But I have fallen in love with her. Um, I You cross-stitch the little apron. And then it has directions on how to make all of these little pieces. So if I were to just break down it, like the project piece by piece, I should be able to construct this. And again, this is something that I've never done. But I think would be so sweet. And I don't know if I'll even try to modernize it. Like I love the little rosy. It's just, I don't know. It's just so cute and different. Um... And it has the instructions. So, like, this is the pattern for the cross-stitching. And then this is the pattern for the doll. And so I think that would be a really fun challenge. Um, another thing that I'd like to do one day is I like the Santa's treats. I think that's really cute. I'd like to make that, like, the entire thing. Uh, what I love about these books is that it shows you how to cross-stitch it. And then it shows you how to fully finish it into this really cool way to display your, your project. Can we just talk about this too? Look at this. Look at that. Look at that doll. Oh my gosh. And look at how cool this is. Like we should bring back some of this. I think some of this stuff is starting to come back in a big way. But I mean, this is just wonderful. So um, if you can get your hands on this, or if you see this, this one is definitely worth picking up. So that is all my plans for some Christmas stitching. Let's see. Oh, I also got this recently. I got this for $2.99 at like this, not a Habitat Restore, but it was something like that. It was like Habitat Rack or I don't know. It was in Tulsa and this was $2.99 and this was fully framed by somebody uh, from Michael's and it's in great condition and it's very patriotic, but I'm going to clean it up. I haven't wiped it down or anything and I'll probably just put it on display somewhere in my house all year long. Um, because it's beautiful and so save the stitches and it was stitched on Ada and it's great this little spot is on the glass it's not on the fabric but I mean this person's stitching was impeccable it, in impeccable like it's perfection it's perfection so yeah if anybody knows where this pattern's from leave it in the comments down below it's really simple no back stitching or anything. So, well, besides this, obviously. And it's done with quite thick thread, too. So I was very happy. I haven't found, like, a really nice piece of cross stitch in a very long time. And I found that. And I instantly coming home. And then another thing that I bought recently at Goodwill was this guy. I don't even know if he's going to fit in the entire piece. But I bought him for $3.99. And he's a Santa... <laughs> He, he's got some crazy doodads up here, but I think he is so sweet and he's weighted. And so he sits like this super good and it's stitched Merry Christmas from our house to yours. And again, it's weighted on the bottom and he's in, well, almost perfect condition. I can just, I can either sew that or I can just glue that back down. But yeah, I bought him. I don't know how old it is, but... I liked him, so he's going to go on display for Christmas this year. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm very interested in putting more beans and weights in my stuff, too, like that. So, yeah. Oh, lastly, I had my Bustilla embroidery that I wanted to show you. Oh, I do have one more thing, don't I? I also got this guy, which I loved. This one was only 99 cents. Very folk art. I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, and so I definitely picked him up too. From Goodwill. I'm trying not to go overboard, but I just, I couldn't leave these guys behind. I just loved them. Cause this is, this will go perfect for my house for Christmas. 
Ow. Oh, I hit my elbow on my camera again. All right. So this guy is from the Vintage Halloween Bustilla Felt Kit. I have a whole video on my thoughts on this. And I did this back in 2021. And I had a goal of making one of these each year. And for some reason, like, just the idea of bringing these out every year just seems so overwhelming. Um, because it took me so long to do this one. And, I mean, it's a little bit rough. But I'm not going to be cruel to myself because I learned so much when I did this one back in 2021. And I have, since doing this one and starting my next one, I realized how far I've come in my hand sewing skills. Um, so yes, so I've decided that I will do the ghost this year because well, at least one is better than none. And I, this is like what, two days worth of work. I didn't work on it at all yesterday because we went to a hockey game, but, um, I've done the face. So I sequined the face and the outline of the ghost, the head, you applique, the little eyes and the mouth. And then, um, you have to sew and applique the glasses together and then you put the sequins on and then I'm going to cut this out and do the glasses and applique the glasses together and then that will go on top and I'm missing a piece oh it's this guy and then I've also done the collar so what I need to do is I need to sew the ghost to the collar and then I need to sew the glasses to the head of the ghost and then after I finish this this will be like this is goal number two and then goal number three is going to be the hand and this section right here so I'm hoping to have this done by the end of the weekend and then be able to put this away and then I will have two of these ornaments done and then you know maybe next year I'll do the cat next I want to do the cat then I want to do the owl then I want to do the spider then I want to do the skull so yeah, I really think that these are so much fun. So, 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 so much fun. I actually, um, I'm glad that I picked this up again because I have a whole unicorn set for Christmas for, for my kids that I would love to get out and start. I was supposed to start in last year and I think it's on my 24 goals in 2024, but at least if I start it, maybe I can click, you know, mark that off as a goal. So yeah, so this has been super fun. I started that on Tuesday. And it is now Friday. So again, it goes fast. Again, um, I just didn't work on it at all yesterday. And then finally, finally, what I will say is for my newsletter, for my free pattern that I want to have up for uh, November 1st, is I would like to have a free pattern, um, something simple that I stitch on this greenish like sage ada that fits in here for christmas and i got this for 99 cents which is cheaper than you can get at hobby lobby because anything under like 450 you can't get on sale so anyway so i got this i'd like to paint this frame and then i'd like to finish like a simple like really blocks stitching right here in this frame so that's my goal also for my newsletter that should come out november 1st and that is it as far as cross stitch and stitching related. It was a lot, wasn't it? All right. Thank you so much for watching you guys. Um, it's been a while since I did a floss tube and doing that different format was just really easy for me today to make sure that I could at least get this floss tube uploaded before Halloween was over. Um, I really appreciate you guys. I'm so glad to be stitching again and to be back in the floss tube community. I have so many cool videos on my channel about quilting and different crafts that if you want to go check them out, I'd really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like and share this video and I will see you guys back sooner than later because I got big stitchy plans for November and December as you saw in today's video. So anyway, you guys, I appreciate y'all and I'll see you very soon. Promise.